The podcast is a little different today as uh, Lisa is out. She has violent, violent diarrhea. And instead, I've got a very violent person who uh, graced us with her presence to just talk about her life, some of the cool stuff she's been up to. If there was a Mount Rushmore of Edmonton athletes, she would without question be on it. Let's welcome to the studio eight-time world boxing champion, Jelena Mergenovic. This is the Ryder and Lisa podcast. Brought to you by Yegg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. How cool is it to hear those words? Eight-time world champion. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Uh, surreal at times, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. At what point along the journey in your boxing career did you think that this was maybe attainable, like the world champion? Did you have that belief from the start? Honestly, it was uh, after I won my title. Um, really? Yeah, my trainer, who was like my second dad, longtime trainer, passed away uh, a couple of years ago now, but uh, I think it was like my fourth fight or fifth fight, and he said, if you keep doing this, he goes, we're going to win a world title within two years. And I laughed at him, of course. I'm like, okay, Milan, whatever you say. And sure enough, like when we won our title, it was 2005. Uh, I was jumping on him because I had this epic knockout. And uh, he's like, I told you so. I told you so. And I said, what? And he like looked at me and he's like, remember when I told you you'd win a world title? He goes, this is our moment. So it was pretty special. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, when was your last fight? My last fight was in June. And we're hoping to get back at it again at some point. Hopefully um, in the new year, early in the new year. So okay. January, February, hopefully. And it could be uh, some pretty decent names attached to it. We won't get into any details <laughs> there. That is uh, fingers crossed. Okay, yes. cool. You've been uh, you've been training with Tyson Fury as he went into what they called the baddest man on the planet match. Uh, tell us what that was like. It was pretty cool. Um, we share the same trainer, Sugar Hill Stewart. He's, uh, he will be a future Hall of Fame trainer. Um, and I was specially requested by Tyson to come into camp. We were here training. He came up to do a couple of weeks training with me before he went off to uh, Tyson's camp, and Tyson FaceTimes us, and he goes, Jelena, are you coming to camp? And I was like, no, I, you know, I got to stay at home and work, and, you know, when my camp comes, I have to go, and he's like, no, no, no. He's like, I need you. I need you to push me. He's like, I need the, I need the company in camp. Next thing you know, like the next morning I woke up and I had a ticket to go to Manchester, like in my inbox. And I was like, Tyson, come on, man. So I ended up being a, a paid training partner for Tyson yeah. Fury. Pretty that, cool. Like how cool is that? Again, like everything along my journey has been surreal. Like it's mm -hmm. it's hard to kind of reflect on how amazing it is, but this one was pretty special. I think Tyson, in my opinion, will go down as one of the greatest heavyweights ever. I, I mean, I don't think that's even arguable at this point. So yeah. to have the opportunity and experience to train with, with the man is, is pretty special. And he does seem like a gem. Like, he just seems like the kind of guy you could hang out with, where a lot of professional athletes don't show as much personality maybe as he does. Oh, he's pretty amazing. Like, yeah. I, I, I have the privilege of saying he's, like, one of my brothers now. You know, uh, he's, he's family. And... and I mean, when you live with someone and train with them twice a day for eight weeks, you get pretty close. You I talk would imagine. about everything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> You've been at this for 20 years now, and you say that it's given you so many cool opportunities. Can you touch on that? So many cool opportunities. I mean, I've traveled the world with conventions and fights. I mean, I fought in Panama, Argentina, France a few times. Japan was pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, it's taken me around the world, met some incredible people, all the world champions, past, present, some future champions, I think, too. So it's, cool. it's been pretty amazing. I've heard nothing but amazing things about you uh, as a person. I know some people in the boxing world, and they all speak very highly of you. Average uh, at best. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've got a spot in town here where people can go, and... If somebody's interested in uh, getting into boxing, would you say Champs is a uh, a place where you can go and and, you know, and get introduced to it? Champs is a special place. It's it's you know I know boxing for me at least when I started was super intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place that I created that I wanted every walk of life to be able to come and just experience the amazingness that boxing's brought to my life. Um, and so 
no experience, young, old, you know, we're kind of it for everybody. And uh, hopefully you get a little motivation while you're there, a couple words of encouragement. So, yeah, Champs Boxing Studio, it's on 109th Street. Well, thank you for coming in. It's so cool that uh, I get an opportunity to chat with you finally after watching your storied career. And we hope you keep kicking people's asses and oh. waving that Edmonton flag. For sure, I will. we got to bring some more championships back here. So we we I sure do. do. I, I try and do my part. You're doing it. <laughs> the Ryder and Lisa Podcast. Brought to you by Yegg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. Play 107.